Hello, I'm Sky Matsuhashi, founder of SmartPokerStudy.com, the place for poker players who are always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. Poker people, make sure you check out episode 37, where I answer some listener questions about online poker in the U.S., my podcast format, and my sit-and-go opening ranges. Hey, poker people, a beautiful Tuesday to you. I know a lot of you are saying right now, I know it's Tuesday, bitch. This ain't my Friday face. But cheer up, you've got hump day tomorrow, thirsty Thursday's next, and then it's freaking Friday and the weekend. Yeehaw! Speaking of the weekend, this past weekend we celebrated Chinese New Year's at our house. Gong hei fa choi, everybody! We had like 40 people here from noon to about 8 p.m. Just eating, talking, drinking, eating more and drinking more. We played a ton of cool movies for the kids. They played outside, jumped on the trampoline. And then we had an awesome poker home game after that. Uh, we played till about 1.30 a.m. or so, you know, really late night, and it's dealer's choice, so we play like Omaha, Hold'em, variations, lots of variations on stud, Chinese poker, Heaven and Hell, Chicago, and these crazy community card games with draws and passing of whole cards and some wild cards and stuff, too. And the party was tons of fun. The poker was a lot of fun, but cleanup was a bitch the next day. But, you know, it was a good weekend overall. Oh, and real quick, The Walking Dead report. Skip forward about 30 seconds to miss any spoilers. So here goes. Rick and Michonne got together. Wow. And to think they were having unmarried sex with Jesus right there in Alexandria. The nerve of some people. You've got to watch the show or read the comics to get that joke. Uh, I like the developments in this episode, but the writer, Angela King, must be one of the worst writers on the show. Every episode she writes has characters doing things either completely out of character or just downright dumb. Things that no normal person would ever do. Like, why would Rick and Daryl leave the car when they found that truck? Why would Rick drive that truck through the field? And why wouldn't Carl just kill Deanna the walker and bring Spencer to her? You know, I'm not a fan of how things happen. But I'm a total fan of the development of the story. I'm looking forward to where it's going from here for sure. So uh, on to the pokers then. This is the third leak plugging podcast in a series of them, all covering leaks sent in by listeners. If you've got the leaks you'd like me to address, send them on in. Today's leak is one that I'm sure a lot of you have, and it's losing too much money out of the blinds. And as an added bonus, I've created a special leak plugging PDF that will be updated as each new episode in this series is posted. I've got the first three leaks on it now, and it gives a quick description of the leak, how to spot it, the major steps to fixing it, and how to exploit the leak in others. So make sure you hit the show notes page at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod38 to download your own copy of the leak plugging PDF and to follow along with everything today. And stick around to the end because I've got a special Amazon Prime Music Contest to tell you about that's exclusive to my listeners. Now here it is, today's podcast mission. My mission for today is to teach you how to gauge whether you're losing too much while playing in the blinds, and how you can go about plugging this leak and exploiting it in others. Alrighty, this leak came via email from Dennis. He says, Okay, I think my biggest leak is my play in the blinds. I consistently limp call instead of raising or three betting. Keep up the good work. I'm loving this project of yours. I'm also curious if you are interested in starting a study group. I have no one other than my coach to communicate directly with about poker, and that can be expensive. If you aren't interested, maybe some of your listeners are. Thanks again, Dennis. Well, thank you so much for sending this in, Dennis. And I'll answer the easy part first. So, Dennis, to create or join a study group with the Smart Poker Study podcast listeners, I'd like for you to join the Smart Poker Study Podcast Facebook group page. I'll be honest and say that we don't have too much going on there yet, but I'd love to see that Facebook page uh, just grow and be a place where poker players like yourself can meet, exchange ideas, and develop friendships. So please visit smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss, join the group, and just start posting there to start making some poker pals, you know? I will respond to every post, and as it grows, others will respond as well. 
So on to the leak part of your question here about losing too much money in the blinds. So let's start this off with kind of a sobering reality. No matter what, you're going to lose money in the blinds. You are out of position when you choose to play, and you give up your blinds when you're forced to throw away a ton of junk hands. Those two things combined make for automatic losing in the blinds in the long run. You know, your job, though, is to lose as little as possible. So I would describe this leak as what happens when a player in the blinds defends with very wide and weak ranges. They view the blind as their money and something worth fighting for, even with Jack-4 suited to a raise from a tight player. I want you to view the blind as your cost of playing. Once it's in the pot, it's not yours anymore. It's not something out there that you need to fight for. Um, And players also get into the habit of 3-bet bluffing too much and giving up too easily post-flop because they're out of position. Also, when defending, they often don't consider their opponent's post-flop tendencies or the fact that being the fifth caller in the big blind makes it difficult to win as you have to rely on hitting the flop hard as you're out of position versus multiple multiple opponents and you're trying to bluff in this situation is, for the most part, just a really terrible idea. All right, so moving on to some ways to spot this leak, if you don't know that you have it or not, I have three different ways to spot spot the leak. The first one is looking at your big blind per 100 hands win rate. The second is viewing the hands you choose to defend with. And the third is viewing big losing pots in the small blinds, or not small blinds, in the blinds. So the first one here, looking at your big blind per 100 hands win rate. Within every poker tracking software, there is a stat for the number of big blinds won or lost per 100 hands. So you can view this by position and see what you're losing in the small blind and the big blind. Our first gauge of this metric is to know what our win rate per 100 hands would be if we folded every small blind and every big blind. Do you know what this is? Shout it out if so. So if you fold every big blind, your win rate for every 100 hands played in the big blind would be negative 100 BBs per 100 hands. Nice and simple. If you folded every small blind, your win rate would be negative 50 BBs for every 100 hands played in the small blind. So the closer you are to zero and the further away from these two numbers you are, the better your blind play is. So make sure you're looking at this over a large sample though. Anybody's big blind win rate could be, you know, positive in the short term. You've played two rounds at the table, but you got aces in the big blind. You stacked a fool, so, you know, you're up 100 big blinds in two hands. So, of course, it's going to be positive. But in the long run is when it's going to be negative no matter what. And there isn't some perfect BB per 100 win rate number. Just find what yours is and work on improving it. I'd love to see your small blind win rate at roughly negative 15 BBs per 100 or better of course, and your big blind win rate at negative 30 BBs per 100 or better. So for myself, over the past 60K hands, 60,000 hands, I'm at negative 14 BBs per 100 in the small blind and negative 35 BBs per 100 hands in the big blind. So these win rates are kind of equate to not paying my small blind 72% of the time and not paying my big blind 65% of the time. It's like at those percentages, I get dealt a hand. I don't even have to put a blind in. I fold and walk away unscathed, you know, so those are pretty decent. I would like to see them better. Of course, you know, the closer they are to zero, the better I'm doing. But, you know, I'll take those numbers. So the second way to spot this leak is viewing the hands you choose to defend with. Hopefully you've got a range you play from the blinds and you're sticking to it. But if not, look at the last few sessions you played and filter hands for the hands that you played or VPIP, you know, voluntarily put money into the pot by position. Review the hand strength of all hands played in the small blind where you called or re-raised and in the big blind where you put in more money to call or re-raised. Do you spot some questionable hands? Are you calling with 10-6 suited and queen-3 suited in spots where it's very difficult to win with these hands? Are you just flatting instead of 3-betting hands like 9s through jacks? Or ace-queen you know, versus a pre-flop raiser likely on a steal? If the guy's likely on a steal, you might want to 3-bet these kinds of hands. You know, By looking at the hands you've chosen to play and the way in which you chose to play them, you'll get a sense of whether you're making mistakes or not. 
And the third way to spot this leak if you're losing too much money in the blinds is by viewing big losing pots in the blind positions. So while you've filtered your hands in the blinds, sort this by the amount of dollars or chips lost in the blinds. Check out the biggest pots anywhere from 10 BBs or more that you lost, you know, negative 10 BBs. Are there any common characteristics to these hands? Was it specific opponents you were fighting back against? Or maybe you didn't give up post-flop with a draw? Or maybe you were paying off too many streaps with top pair weak kicker? You know, look for patterns to figure out where you're paying off your opponents so you can begin to save yourself some valuable big blinds and get closer to that zero BBs per 100 win rate. Alrighty, so we're on to the reason why most of you are listening right now. We're going to cover the major steps to fixing this leak. And I'm going to give you six steps here, and I really do suggest doing these in order to improve your blind play. Start with number one and go on through two, three, four, five, six. And one of the reasons why is because the first three are kind of the easiest and quickest ones to put into your game. And the next ones after that take a little bit more work. But if you just do the first three, you will have already improved your blind play, most likely at least. Uh, so the first step is know your current big blind per 100 win rate. This is your benchmark, and now your goal is to simply improve on this number, getting closer to zero. Just being more aware of this number and tracking its decline will give you incentive to improve it. So if you don't do anything else to work on your big blind play, just know what your win rate is, or not big blind play, just your blind play. Know what your win rate is and work to improve it. Step number two in fixing the leak is view the blinds as dead money, not your money. Don't get all revengey and feel that you've got to defend the blinds against all who would try to steal it. If the situation isn't good to defend, don't do it. Consider the players that you're up against and determine if it's a good defense or not. Step number three is actively choose who you're playing against when you click call or raise in the blinds. When you're first to act, maybe your early position, middle position, even in the cutoff, you can't choose who plays against you. But when there's an open and you decide to call or three bet, or there's an open in a few calls, or there's three limpers, you're doing so out of position and purposefully against this player. So know who you're up against and what their post-flop tendencies are. You are choosing to call this guy or three bet him pre, but before doing so, know what to expect on most flops. If his C bet is 80%, you know he's firing on the flop almost every time you check. If you've got value, you can check call then donk the turn, or you can even check raise if you think he'll continue to a check raise. If you've got a draw, just check call if the price is right, or check raise as a semi bluff. If he's super flop honest, that's great! Just check, and if he checks behind, fire every turn. There are so many ways to exploit your opponent's post-flop tendencies from the blinds. It's your job to know what their tendencies are so that you can make these exploitive plays. So on to step four in this process here. Create your own calling and three betting ranges from the blinds before you hit the tables next. If you need some help in doing this, Podcast 22, where I discussed ranges in regards to Ed Miller's book, The Course, might help you out. I also suggest hitting my Poker Ranges creation article at smartpokerstudy.com slash ranges. And there's a link to this in the show notes as well. And if this is the first time ever making a calling and three bending range, once created, don't vary it at all during your session. You'll be tempted to against certain opponents or when you see that lovely queen eight suited that's just outside your calling range that you establish, but just don't do it, at least for now. Stick with your ranges and assess the hands you played and folded after your session. Was that king 10 suited a good hand to play? Would 10 eight suited work better against your most common openers? Are there hands that you folded that you would like to have called and should you consider adding these to your ranges? Once you get familiar with these ranges you created, then you can start making on-the-fly adjustments as you play based on the situation. So my own standard calling range in the blinds is deuces through nines, of course with good implied odds for set mining, all suited broadways and suited connectors down to 9-8 suited. I'll also call ace-queen off and ace-king off. My standard 3-betting range is 10s or better, ace-queen suited and ace-king suited. I also have a 3-bet bluffing hand or two that I always throw in. Right now, I'm 3-bet bluffing with ace-6 suited and ace-5 suited. And the reason for these is, of course, they're suited aces, so they can flop really strong. And plus, there's an ace blocker there. The fact that I have an ace makes it less likely my opponent has an ace, which makes it more likely he'll fold to my 3-bet re-steal. 
And if I'm opening a small blind, you know, everybody folded to me and I'm, and I'm in the small blind, I will never open limp, but I'll open the entire calling range and three betting range just mentioned against most opponents. I might widen it for super foldy guys and tighten it against stations who call anything. Now, of course, all of this varies by opponent and their post-flop stats. I'll expand or contract these ranges as I see fit, but I'm more than happy sticking with this 100% of the time and without making any adjustments at all. These ranges will fit against most players. But if you want to play the best poker you can and be as exploitative as you can, or exploitive as you can, not sure the proper word there, um, you know, you will start to adjust these ranges as you play. And step number five in fixing this leak is, and it's something that I've already mentioned, but it's going through and filtering for hands played in the blinds, but it would be a good idea to do this for one hour per day for the upcoming week. Look for the hand strength you chose, the opponent you chose to play against, how likely you were to make money in each situation, and any mistakes made. One hour per day, focus time, focus study time, will make you a much better player. And speaking of focus, step six in this process of fixing this leak is to play focus sessions where you're intent on working on your blind game. Test your re-raises and calling ranges, test your pre-flop reseal spots, test your post-flop play when heads up and multi-way, and record game tape uh, to review later on. And just as a refresher, focus sessions, if you want to learn more about it, I talked about in podcast episode number eight, and game tape I top talked about in episode number 11. And you know, during these focus sessions, there are so many different plays that you can test when defending your blinds. I won't go into any of them here, but here's a list that you can Google to learn more. And someday I will create a podcast on each of these types of plays. So the first one is the light three bet. The next is out of position floating the flop. The next is donk betting and barrel bluffing. Uh, the next is semi bluffing with equity, either pre flop or post flop. The next is the stop and go play. The next is the squeeze play. And the next is the check raise on the flop, turn, or river. Those are all plays that you can learn about and then test in these focus sessions. All right, so finally, we've talked a ton about the leaks, went over how to fix them. As you are researching your leaks and learning how to fix your leaks, you should also work on using what you've learned to exploit the leak in other players. This is your leak, but millions or you know, thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of players, if not millions, have this same leak that you have. And there are some guys that are just too tight in the blinds. Target these guys with lots of raises pre with hands that have some potential like suited cards and connectors. Don't go overboard and steal with a good old nine deuce off, but choose hands that can flop well and give you some potential for some barreling. The perfect players to target in the blinds are those that call wide and fold to most flop and turn c-bets. The kinds I'm talking about are the ones that call from the blinds 30% of the time or more and fold to c-bets like 70% of the time or more. These guys play weak ranges which can't stand up to a lot of pressure post-flop. Target them with c-bets and if they fight back you can easily ditch the hand. Folding, if you don't know, folding is a way to exploit their uncharacteristic aggression. If a guy folds a lot, but is suddenly calling and raising, then you know he's strong and you can fold now and not pay him off any more money. If you're up against an aggressive check raiser in the blinds or someone he, somebody who floats liberally and tries to steal on later streets, you need to put them on a range and assess whether the flop hit them or not. If they are defending your steal with, say, 150 different hands and only 20 of those hands have a good reason to check raise, that's only like 13% of hands, you know? If he's check raising 25% of the time, then it's likely he's just trying to push you off. You can call or re-raise as you see fit to fight his aggression. Plus, against this guy, you can see bet for value, call his raise, and because you're in position, you won't let a streak go by without a big bet going in. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Figure out your big blind per 100 hands win rate in both blind positions and work on improving this for one full week by hitting each of the six steps above. Choose your cards, opponents, and situations carefully when you choose to defend and test out the different plays I mentioned. I'd love to hear what your big blind per 100 win rate was before and after your full week of focus, study, and play. Now it's your turn to take action and scooby dooby do something positive for your poker game. Do it! Just do it! Make your dreams come true! Do it! Just do it! Do it! <laughs>
All right, to recap the episode, we talked all about fixing the leak of losing too much in the blinds. We talked about the characteristics of this leak, showed you how to spot this leak through stats and observing your play, and gave you six steps to correct the leak. And some ways to exploit this leak in others should net you some nice wins as well. Please go to the show notes at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod38 for everything mentioned here. And make sure you pick up the leak plugging PDF while you're there. <laughs> Now it's time for a poker review. So technically this isn't a review, but it's something that I just learned about and I'm super excited for. Split Suit over there at Red Chip Poker is putting on a webinar this Saturday all about playing positive EV poker versus unknowns. It's at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and he'll teach us how to spot and gather information against unknowns so they become known players very quickly, how to create positive EV strategies against the new guy that just sat at your table, how to three bet preflop when you have zero or just very little information on your opponent, and how to understand their strategy after only seeing a few hands and how to profitably adjust to it. So I'm totally looking forward to this to this webinar. You can sign up for the webinar by visiting smartpokerstudy.com slash redchipunknowns. You'll be taken directly to a sign-up page and a link for it's in the show notes for this page. I'm sorry that I don't have a discount code, nor am I getting anything to mention this to you, but I'll probably be there myself. And if you know anything about Split Suit, you know this will be worth the price. Check it out with me and we can discuss it in the Facebook group afterwards. Thank you so much for listening today, and if you like this leak plugging series, please send me any leak that you are suffering from, and I may just do a podcast on it. The more people that send in about the same leak, the more likely I'll be to cover it. Also, I love feedback. Hit me with it through the show notes, or you can send me an email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com, tweet me at smartpokerstudy, or post in the Facebook group at smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss. And please send me your questions, your leaks, or ideas for podcast topics through all the channels just mentioned. And here's your chance to enter my Amazon Prime Music Contest. Everyone who signs up for a free Amazon Prime Music trial will be entered into a contest to win a copy of The Freedom Journal. This is a lovely leather-bound book that helps you set and attain SMART goals in 100 days. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound, just like we discussed back in episode number 2. I supported this journal on Kickstarter and received a few copies for my support, and this is your chance to win one of my copies for free. All you have to do is sign up for a free 30-day trial to Amazon Prime Music through me and send me a screenshot of your free trial sign-up confirmation. With your free trial of Amazon Prime Music, you'll enjoy unlimited ad-free music streaming from thousands of playlists and stations. And this is the best part for you, free two-day shipping. And the best part for me, your signing up supports me as this is one of my affiliates and I get a little kickback for each new sign-up. So please visit the show notes at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod38 and click on the Prime Music banner for this great offer. The contest will run through February 29th, so sign up before then and email me a screenshot of your Prime Music confirmation. Alrighty, poker people, be sure to come back for Friday's episode number 39, where I answer some of your questions, and I think it might be an all-hand history Q&A. Word of mouth is the best advertising, and a recommendation from you to your friends would be most appreciated. If you enjoyed our time together and learned a little something, please share it with your talking dog. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. Always.